So far we have looked at three different statistical applications and the reason that we look at statistical applications is a lot of the concepts that come up in statistical applications are mirrored in the probability concepts that are going to present, be presented in this class. So the first application had to do with ball bearing failure times and that was a univariate data set and they were collected in millions of revolutions. The second data set concerned the eruption time and the waiting time at Old Faithful Geyser, which is in Yellowstone National Park. And then the third application were warranty claim times, and that again was a bivariate data set. Well, in this next application here, this is a statistical application that involves four different variables being collected simultaneously. And so here is the application. The weights of cork deposits measured in centigram for n equals 28, that is our sample size, so this is tree number 1, tree number 2, all the way up to tree number 28, is collected in four directions, north, east, south, and west. And if you look at the data set, it turns out that this value right here, this 100, is the maximum value of all the values that are collected. And if you look in this same row here, you will know that 75 is a little on the high side here. The same is true of 79 and 91. So immediately you suspect that there might be what is known as positive correlation between the various directions. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see that there is something known as a correlation matrix. And let me go ahead and put labels on the rows and on the columns, this is north, east, south, and west. The same as here, north, east, south, and west. There is a perfect correlation on the diagonal, and that will always be the case for all correlation matrices. But the more interesting numbers are off diagonal, and let's go ahead and highlight one of them. Let's pick off this one. There is a positive sample correlation between the cork deposits on the north and the south side of the trees. That's what this point 0.9 tells you. It appears here and this is a symmetric matrix. It also appears here. All of the values in a correlation matrix, sample correlation matrix, are going to fall between negative 1 and positive 1 inclusive. Now the other thing you can do is you can look at the distribution of each of the four directions alone. So down here we have something known as a box plot and you have north, east, south, and west. You have a box for each of those different directions and for each direction you get a bunch of different values that are specified here. This uh, top one here is the sample maximum this line that is drawn here, those are known as the whiskers. This right here is the sample 75th percentile. This right here in the middle of the box is the sample 50th percentile. But that happens to also be known as the sample median. The bottom of the box will be the sample 25th percentile. And the very bottom here will be the sample minimum. Some programs when they draw a box plot will have special symbols that they put out here if there is something that they deem to be an outlier. Now all of this can be done in R and on the next slide you'll see some R code and in this case I use the read.table function to read this from an external data file and that external data file needs to be placed, the name of the external data file needs to be placed in double quotes. 
Well, now that that is into the data structure cork, you can use the R function COR with an argument cork. And what it will do is it will compute that correlation matrix that you saw in the previous slide. And then what you can do is you can call box plot on cork. And you have to put in the various directions for the labels, northeast, south, and west. And that will draw you the box plot.